welcome back to part 5. If you're still here, just want to say thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. This is going to be the final video in this series, which I'm going to show how I created the environment. This was super quick and super simple as it wasn't originally planned. I just kind of, just kind of went with it. So the first thing I did was collect reference material. I did this the same way as a lightsaber, so I just used pure ref in Google. Looking for Star Wars environments, I found a really nice one from a Lego Star Wars game of a simple hallway. So I thought I'd try and recreate something similar to that. I wanted to put my own twist on it, so I had a lot more lights, but I still stick with the art style and the flow to try and match the universe. The first thing I started with was the floor. That way I could get an idea of the scale of the hallway and how wide it would be. I did this by just creating a plane which was 4 meters by 4 meters. I then created some side columns, that way I could break it up as I started to put it into Unreal. Because I knew I was doing this really quickly and it was going to be quite a dirty piece together, so I apologize for that. But I just jumped into Photoshop and just wanted to use block colors to get an idea of how the scene would look. This also allowed me to get a pretty rough idea of the style that it would become. Because I knew I wasn't doing anything too complicated, I used the same technique that I used in my try to build an Oculus Quest environment in one hour challenge. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a little card in the top right corner, that way you can check it out. I highly recommend doing so if you're into environment design, that kind of thing. I then came back over into Blender and started working on the hallway wall, essentially. I realized that I wanted to have a drop, which would make a gap. I could have extended the floor plane, but because of the way corner snapping would work, I wanted to make it individually so I could control where pieces would go and have more control over it later on. And I also have the ability to merge objects in Unreal as well, so this wasn't too much of an issue. Here I started working on the ceiling. I wanted to break the environment up slightly since it was starting to become relatively smooth. And to do this, it doesn't seem like much, but I dropped the ceiling down a little bit and made some little corner edges, which you can see there. You wouldn't think it would add too much detail, but it works really well in the overall aesthetic. And something as simple as that can break up a scene quite a bit, especially when you're looking down a repetitive hallway. It also later on gives you the ability to put stuff up there, so like pipes or wires even like computer circuit boards of some kind. You can normally put them up there and break it up the repetition as you go, which is quite a nice thing to do. That's also what I'm trying to do here. So I create another wall segment with these overhangs. The idea was I could make some little boxes with like circuit boards and computer panels that would have blinking lights. But unfortunately I didn't get far enough into the project to put that in. To try and visualize what I was going for, I went back over to Photoshop to start to save out the texture. So the first one I created is a base color. And then I actually used Photoshop with a new layer to create a roughness map. I actually get this the wrong way around to begin with, so I have to go back in later and switch it. But you can see here I'm just bringing them both into Unreal, where I add them to a material. It's a super simple material, it's just got the roughness channel and a base color. The reason for setting up the materials in Unreal first rather than Blender was just so I could make sure they're all right to save a little bit of time later. Now what I can do is jump back into Blender and start unwrapping. You can see in the Photoshop file that I actually created a little black square in the bottom left corner because I knew the floor would be black and it wouldn't have any kind of detail on it. I could shrink their UV space down to take up a smaller area. That way if I was to work on this project a bit more I could actually have more texture sheets to work with and to fill up other models and texture other assets with while keeping the detail there. If I was to add edge detail, I would probably do a trim on its own. That way I could break it up a little bit easier while keeping the small UVs. At this point in the process, I started doing a lot of back and forth between Photoshop, Blender and Unreal. Ideally, I should have stuck with Blender built all the models through, then textured with Photoshop, unwrapped in Blender, and then back to Unreal. That would have probably been the better workflow to go for, but because I wasn't too sure how I was doing this and I was making it up as I went, it just sort of naturally 
went that way. So if you're doing something similar, don't worry about going back and forth to begin with. Just try what you've got and get a hang of where you're going with it. Even though I'm scaling the UVs down for the side parts to go into the little black square in the bottom left, I find it's still really good practice to fix your UVs. That way, let's say if I was to come into this later on and I want to extend these up and actually texture them with individual materials, I could simply open up the material, just scale up the UVs and it would still work. And I wouldn't have to spend loads of time trying to unwrap, reposition, scale, all that kind of thing. So if, you, if you're doing this, just try and keep that as good practice as to always make your UVs correct in the positions that they are. Heading back over to Photoshop, I use the color select tool to select where the lights are going to be. And I actually make an emissive map. This is just a black and white texture which allows light in specific areas. Bringing that into Unreal, I hook it up to a color multiplier so I can actually control the intensity using a material instance, which I do here. So I hook everything up in the main shader, turn them all into parameters, and then I can convert that into a material instance, which I can apply to the meshes. So I realize here that the edges that I already had on this mesh, you couldn't really see them. So I actually, rather than removing them because there was a couple and I liked the angle, I removed the faces and then bridged them. That gave me a sharper edge. I then inset where the lights were just to get that little bit of extra detail from the mesh. At this point, I start to prepare to bring it over to Unreal. So the side, the columns, essentially. So I just change the pivot point and then use a plugin that I have for Blender, which allows me to export that from 000 world space. In Unreal, I then import the object and make sure it's at world space zero as well. That way I can use the snap tools to control whereabouts it is in the world. After bringing the mesh in, I realized the roughness channel might be a bit too intense. So I drop back into the material and I build a parameter so I can control how rough the material will look. This is extremely useful when doing a build from desktop to the Oculus Quest, as the Quest's performance is quite restricted on reflections. And ideally, you probably should avoid them. But since this is such a basic project and I was pushing it as far as I could, I just kind of went with it, see how it would go. And honestly, the end result was quite surprising. <laughs> if you stick around till the end, I'll actually show a comparison between desktop and the Quest. And there's very little difference. I then brought in the ceiling mesh and used grid snapping to position it in the scene. I also went back into the material and increased the roughness amount. That was just to reduce the amount of reflections in the scene as I was worried my computer might not be able to handle this just because I'm running an old graphics card. So going back into Blender, I start working on these little floor trims. I want these to be light, but I also like the idea of having them a little bit more color. So I create a black material in Photoshop on the textures that I could do some little trim effects. It's extremely subtle, but by using the black against the gray around the environment, just helps break it up that little bit more. And obviously we still have loads of room on our trim sheet so we don't really have to worry about it. Because I still like the idea of having them as lights, I jump back into Photoshop and I just do the same technique that I created for the other ones, which is just a rectangle with beveled edges. And I go through, I make that white, I make the base material and I save out a base and the emissive again. I don't really need to worry about the roughness map because it's just gonna be the same. So I can leave that as it is. But here in Blender, I just start scaling the UVs to match the new texture sheet. I could have made it go all the way along, but it would have been a harsh edge against the columns. So I actually extend the UVs a little bit more. So the bevel flows a little bit easier and it just goes around before the column gets there. I actually had an issue here where I was trying to re-import the new object with the new UVs, but it wasn't updating. And it took me too long to realize that I actually changed the naming convention of the mesh on the export, which means it was exporting a different mesh. And it wasn't until I checked the file structure that I realized the naming conventions were different. So I had to delete the old mesh and then re-import the new one just to have the correct name. That way I could work a bit easier with it. 
With these in place, all I'm doing is trying to get an idea of the flow of the hallway. This is where I feel the scene starts to take shape, is where I start working on the wall meshes. So following the reference material, I try to go with the standard Star Wars look and feel, and I copy this quite closely to the reference material. I know I want to break it up slightly with some different colors, so I start thinking about air vents of some kind. And to do this, I actually just went on Google Images and found a picture of an air vent and reshaped that for the trim sheet. I also changed its color just to match the scene a little bit more. And this was simply done by making it just a little bit darker. It worked quite well, especially when scaling the UVs to match the vent. You couldn't really tell that it was not geometry. You could probably push this a little bit more by using normal maps as well. But I was trying to avoid these as much as possible. But in the next thing I do, I might actually add these and see how it looks. I realized leaving them as the base gray doesn't really look very well. So here I just start to unwrap faces and apply them to different parts of the UV atlas that we have. So we've got the two grays, the gray and the black. And I realized that I can actually position the UVs around these areas to make them stand out a little bit more. The next step was to actually bring these into Unreal. And as soon as these got into Unreal, I feel like the whole thing took like a completely different turn for how it actually looked. Especially with how difficult it is to judge something on just some panels. After I added these to the scene, I started repositioning them around the hallway. Just by adding these in, made it feel more grounded in the Star Wars universe. Even though there was only a floor, a ceiling, a wall, and a light mesh, the whole thing felt very Star Wars to me, and I was really pleased with the end result. You can see here I'm just extending the length of the hallway, as I was hoping that you could teleport a little bit back and forth, and that would just sell the effect a little bit more. But I didn't want the user to be able to see around the corner, since there was no meshes actually there. I also had an issue on the ceiling because I didn't have it designed correctly for the modularity to snap. I had to think outside and add some lights in different places and it actually worked really well in the end result. Here I start adding the nav mesh. This was just so I could start getting into it and seeing how it would look within the headset. I wasn't too happy with how rough the environment was or how reflective it was. I'd probably change a little thing here and there if I was to do it again. But overall, I was really happy with the final result, and I hope you guys are as well, because this was 13 hours cut down into, I think, two and a quarter, and this is the end result. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something from all the mistakes and what I've done so far, <laughs> and I hope you can break it down. But here's the end result. This is running on the desktop. I was actually really pleased with the end result, especially with the quality that I was able to get out of it in such a short time. I just want to say sorry about the lag in this clip. My computer seems to struggle recording VR gameplay from the desktop. But here we actually switch over to the Oculus Quest. So this is the exact same project, I've made no changes to it. And this is how it runs. Also side quest doesn't seem to record audio for some reason, but the audio is still in there. The only difference I see on the project is actually the color of the blades. They seem to take a different tint, but that can be fixed easily by just changing the color of the lightsaber themselves based on the platform you're building to. So that's it for this series. It's been five videos, two and a bit hours, I think. But overall, I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope you're able to learn something from it as well, even from all my mistakes. And I hope it inspires you to build something yourself and not to be too scared about just jumping in and doing something. Until the next video, I hope you stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.